Bill and Ted Face the Music streaming pre-orders are live and it's available to own. So, interesting part about this is it's not available to own everywhere, but it is available to rent in standard and 4K for $19.99. However, uh, you can own the movie for only $24.99, so for an extra 5 bucks, you can purchase it over on Amazon Prime Video, iTunes, or Vudu. So if you are interested in just spending the extra 5 bucks and knowing that it's going to be yours for the rest of your life, this is a great way to go. Uh, these pre-orders have it set, so uh, they'll give you an announcement when it officially became, becomes available, but August 28th is the set date for that to be launched. You can check out more information on this over at comicbook.com. So, I don't know about you, but I intend to uh, watch this one. I'm I'm very entertained. We'll see what my wife has to say about that. But I, I'm very excited to see a new Bill and Ted. I'm a huge Keanu Reeves fan, so hopefully this won't be a huge disappointment to a couple of movies that I really enjoyed when I was younger. Continuing on over on GameSpot... Amazon makes a big move in gaming by partnering with developer of, ma of a massive FPS. So, this goes into uh, talking about the developer of Crossfire and the game that's soon to come out on Xbox One is Crossfire X is being purchased by Amazon Games. Uh, it's this Korean developer called Smilegate. So, effectively, they've been having issues with trying to get games going. The first game went out and then was pulled back off the market to continue to give it an additional work based off of user feedback. So we'll see the first game re-released here soon. And coming up shortly, we should be seeing New World, uh, which is Amazon's first MMO. And it's had its beta delayed a couple of times now, but we're supposed to be seeing a beta open up here uh, in August. I believe it's August 25th is the date for that. Um, I don't believe that is listed in this article for that release date. However, uh, that beta is primarily focused towards people who have already pre-ordered the game. There will be some people who gain access to it by simply have signed up uh, through the website. But we'll see how that one goes. Coronavirus has slowed that down, so we're not sure exactly when we're going to get full edition of that. But if you are interested in checking that one out, you can head over to to Amazon, go through their New World page or through Steam to, to see that's availability. Over on Microsoft's website uh, through Xbox.com, the Xbox Wire, uh, we have co-op gameplay where they're showing off a video of how co-op will work um, in the new game that comes out next week on Friday, so that would be the 28th. Uh, they the summary basically says that Wasteland 3 launches August 28th on Xbox Game Pass and Xbox One and Windows 10 PC. There are a lot of online co-op options for both Xbox One and PC to ensure both players make progress and have fun. For more details and a look at co-op in action, check out the trailer above. So if you're interested in that, head over to the Xbox Wire. You'll be able to, to watch and uh, see how their gameplay goes through if you're wanting to play with your friends on this uh, classic RPG turn-based game. Uh, if you don't know, Wasteland is effectively the original game for Fallout, and it continues to play in that Fallout style. Yeah. Over on Twitter, uh, we have information from uh, Patrick... Uh, uh, Bitar, uh, he is, I believe he's part of Kind of Funny, and he asks, Hey Imran, uh, people are going crazy over Demon Souls being raided in Korea with Spider-Man, and they think it's a launch title. Is it possible for DES, so Demon Souls, to be a launch title, or are we just going crazy? And the developer responds with, I doubt it, if only for COVID reasons, but I think it's a it's I don't think it's off the table. As far as I know, they always they had always been targeting launch slash launch window. So 
if this is something you're interested in, if you're a fan of the Demon Souls games and the remakes, it's entirely possible that we will see this game come out and be available launch day, if not shortly thereafter. So that's exciting news to have this game getting ready to be released. Uh, so if you're a Souls fan, yeah, put a put a mark on this. Follow along. See what uh, Imran has to say because it's entirely possible we will see this pop up. And also on Twitter, we have more Fortnite news in retaliation, uh, effectively against Apple and what they them trying to kick Epic Games entirely off of the Apple Store and prevent developer tools. Uh, these tools are being stopped from everyone from. Uh, different video games, Epic, uh, third-party game developers. So it's it's a real problem over there. So what they've done is created an event. Uh, all of you friends, fabulous prizes and one bad apple. We're dropping the free Fortnite cup on August 23rd. Uh, check out our blog for more info. And they have a, a thing over there apparently this will still be doable on ios so if you already have the game installed you'll also be able to partake in this event uh this is going on everywhere and they're giving away prizes for anyone who is a part of the free apple uh event or free hashtag free Fortnite event uh over in tech news uh Another downside for those who use iOS, Apple Lightroom update permanently deleted user photos. So if you have, if you use the Lightroom app from Adobe, uh, it has been confirmed that this update has deleted some people's photos permanently. Uh, you can go over to Engadget and read the story. Unfortunately, this is just another knock onto Apple. Um, between everything that they've been doing to the gaming industry and problems they're having and now they're having issues with individual apps not even able to to go through and do what they're supposed to without erasing your data. So no information on this being a problem with Android and I believe this is available on Android as well. Continuing on in Gadget, we have news from Tesla where Tesla wants to use radar sensors to de detect kids left in hot cars. So this is a cool new feature where they go in and they talk about using a low-powered, short-range uh, radar inside the cabin of the vehicle. And it would detect if there's movement inside, so if there are children or, or animals, something left in the car and you're not going to leave the car isn't going to remain off or it's going to notify the user could potentially pop the car into dog mode to make sure that, that whoever's in there is safe um, while still notifying people so you can give this a read over on Engadget this is just cool new tech some uh, an awesome safety feature that no other car has really explored. Uh, I don't know that any other car company has come up with an idea where they want to ensure that the users and the people using their vehicles just have that little bit of extra safety, um, which is, you know, unfortunately we see every year that someone has left their child in a car and they passed away. Someone went into work and forgot their kid was there or intentionally left them there thinking they'd be fine. So this is... This is a good feature to have, and hopefully it will help save lives in the future. Another car news, former Uber, Uber security chief arrested for covering up a 2016 hack. Uh, so basically what's going on is federal prosecutors have charged Uber's former security chief, Joseph Sullivan, with obstruction of justice for attempting to hide the company's 2016 data breach. From the Federal Trade Commission's FTC, the hack exposed the email addresses and phone numbers of 57 million Uber drivers and customers. So this is not good. Uh, I'm sure their stock is going to take a hit from something like this. Uh, they're definitely going to have to look in and find out how deep the damage was. Uh, I don't know that how much Uber has actually done in order to help protect people since then. Um, but overall, this is this is going to be a big problem. If you want to read the full article, it is also over at Engadget. This released uh, not this released not that long ago. It's only been out for a couple of 
for about 15 hours so it should be still there on the front page if you're looking for it before I get the link up after the show and then finally 235 million TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube profiles have been exposed. Uh, so effectively what's gone on here is this uses a process called web scraping and sites already use this to get information off of people who visit their website and they track and stack that information and then they sell that to other people. So this isn't actually an illegal process but uh, this is something that companies do and uh, it, it's kind of skeevy in many ways. It's something that I'm pretty sure Google uses. And they're selling your information. So just remember, if you're not paying for it, you probably are the product. Uh, but this, uh, this information that has been for, for web scraping um, is actually the information that has been stolen on about 235 million users. So... If you're concerned about this or you want to find out more, again, this is going to be over on WCCF Tech. Uh, they reported this uh, yesterday, and uh, so if you haven't heard this news, you know you can go in through here, read up what's going on, and um, you can read about the the major data sets that were leaked and contain profile names, full names, profile photos, ages, genders, as well as stats on how many users had all been leaked in this data so they have a link here uh, to get you through to that stuff so uh, yeah not good news over there especially uh, especially on TikTok which already has such heavy scrutiny on it for for illegally collecting information up through November of last year well, that's going to be it for today's nerdy news. Thanks for hanging out. Remember to click that follow button if you haven't already. Uh, follow me on YouTube where this will be up later on as Gray Falcon. And over on Twitter as the Gray Falcon. if you would like to add any more information, think there are articles that pop up that should be a part of this, or just want to have a general chat while I'm offline. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.